For today's video, we are going to continue our discussion on quadratic equations. And this time, we are going to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. On the first set of example, we're going to make each expression as a perfect square trinomial. Then we are going to find the factors of the resulting trinomial. On number one, we have x squared plus 2x plus blank. So what must be the number to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial? So to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial, all we have to do is to take the coefficients of the middle term, and that is 2, divide by the constant 2, and that is 1, and we are going to square the result. So 1 squared, that is 1. So we're going to have 1 to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial. And to factor this 1, let us have the square root of the first term, that is x squared. So the square root of x squared is x, sine of the middle term is positive, square root of 1, that is 1, and then square. And this will be our answer. On number 2, we have x squared minus 10x plus blank. So the middle term is negative 10. So let us divide this 1 by 2, and that is negative 5. Negative 5 squared, that is 25. So we're going to add 25 to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial. And to factor this one, let us have the square root of x squared, that is x, sine of the middle term is negative, square root of 25 is 5, and then square. And this will be our answer. On number 3, we have x squared minus 7x plus blank. So this time, the coefficient of middle term is add number, so this will be negative 7 divide by 2. So let us square this one. So this will be negative 7 squared, that is 49, and 2 squared, that is 4. So we're going to add 49 over 4 to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial. And the factor, let us have the square root of x squared, that is x, and let's have the sign of the middle term, the square root of 49 over 4, that's 7 over 2, and then square. And this will be our answer. On number 4, we have x squared plus 3x plus blank. So let us have 3 divided by 2, then square, that is 9 over 4. So we are going to add 9 over 4 to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial. And to factor this one, let us have the square root of x squared, that is x, sine of the middle term, that is positive, square root of 9 over 4, that is 3 over 2, and square. This will be our answer. On example number 5, we have x squared minus 3 over 2x plus blank. So as you can see, the coefficients of the middle term is a fraction. So let us have negative 3 over 2. Let us divide this 1 by 2. So let us have negative 3 over 4. All we have to do is to multiply the denominator by 2, that is 4. And then let us square this 1. Negative 3 squared, that is 9. 4 squared, that is 16. So 9 over 16 must be added to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial. And to factor this one, let us have the square root of x squared, and that is x, sine of the middle term is negative, and the square root of 9 over 16, that is 3 over 4, and then square. And this will be our answer. On number 6, we have x squared plus 3 over 4x plus blank. So let us have 3 over 4 divided by 2, and that is 3 over 8, that is 4 times 2. So let us square this one. 3 squared is 9, 8 squared is 64. So 9 over 64 must be added to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial. And to factor this one, the square root of x squared is x, the sine of the middle term is positive, Square root of 9 over 64, that is 3 over 8, and then we have a square, and this will be our answer. On number 7, we have 2x squared minus 13x plus blank. So this time, the value of a is greater than 1, and that is 2. So to simplify this one, to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial, all we have to do is to make the value of a equals to 1. So let us divide the whole equation by 2 to make the values of a equals to 1. So this will be x squared minus 13x over 2 plus blank. 
So let us have negative 13 over 2 divided by 2. And that is negative 13 over 4. That is 2 times 2. So let us square this one. So this will be 169 over 16. So we are going to add 169 over 16 to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial. And to factor this one, let us have the square root of x squared, and that is x. And then the sine of the middle term is negative. The square root of 169 over 16, that is 13 over 4, and then square. And this will be our answer. On example number 8, we have 5x squared minus 2x plus blank. So just like in example number 7, we're going to make the values of a equals to 1. So let us divide the whole equation by 5. Let's cancel this one. So we're going to have x squared minus 2x over 5 plus blank. So let us have negative 2 over 5 divided by 2. So this will be negative 2 over 10. That is 5 times 2. We're going to have 10. Or we can write this one as negative 1 over 5 because they are divisible by 2. So let us square this one. Negative 1 squared is 1. 5 squared is 25. So we're going to add 1 over 25 to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial. And to factor this one, this will be the square root of x squared, and that is x. Sine of the middle term is negative. Square root of 1 over 25, that is 1 over 5, and then square. And this will be our answer. On the second set of example, we are going to solve the following quadratic equations by completing the square. On example number 1, we have x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. So the first thing that we're going to do is to move positive 8 on the other side of the equation. So this will be x squared plus 6x equals negative 8. And we're going to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial. So we are going to add a number on both sides of the equation. Since the middle term is 6, so this will be 6 divided by 2, that is 3, and 3 squared, that is 9. So 9 must be added to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial. So let us add 9 on the other side. So let us factor this one. The square root of x squared, that is x, sine of the middle term is positive, square root of 9, that is 3, and then square. And negative 8 plus 9, that is 1. So to simplify this one, let us square both sides of the equation. It will give us x plus 3 equals square root of 1, that is positive and negative 1. Since the value of square root of 1 is positive and negative 1, we're going to have two equations. So this will be x plus 3 equals 1. And the other one is x plus 3 equals negative 1. So let us move 3 on the other sides of the equation. So this will be x equals 1 minus 3, and that is negative 2. And then, this will be x equals negative 1 minus 3, and that is negative 4. So therefore, the values of x are negative 2 and negative 4. On number 2, we have x squared minus 4x equals negative 3. So as you can see, the constants already move on the other side of the equation. So all we have to do is to have x squared minus 4x. We're going to make this expression as a perfect square trinomial. So we are going to add a number on both sides of the equation. So we have negative 4 divided by 2. That is negative 2. And negative 2 squared, that is 4. So we are going to add 4 on both sides of the equation. And to factor this one, this will be square root of x squared, that is x, sine of the middle term is negative, square root of 4, that is 2, and then we have a square. Negative 3 plus 4, that is 1. So let us square both sides of the equation. Let us cancel this one. It will give us x minus 2 equals square root of 1 is positive and negative 1. And we're going to have two equations because the value of square root of 1 is positive and negative. So this will be x minus 2 equals 1 and x minus 2 equals negative 1. So let us move negative 2 on the other side of the equation. So this will be x equals 1 plus 2, and that is 3. And then x equals negative 1 
plus 2 and that is 1. So therefore, the values of x are 3 and 1. On example number 3, we have x squared plus 7x minus 18 equals 0. So the first thing that we're going to do is to move the constant on the other side of the equation. It will give us x squared plus 7x equals 18. And we are going to make this side of the equation as a perfect square trinomial. So we are going to add a number on both sides of the equation. So we have 7 over 2, let us square this one. 7 squared is 49, 2 squared that is 4. So we're going to add 49 on both sides of the equation. So let us have the square root of x squared, that is x, sine of the middle term that is positive, square root of 49 is 7, square root of 4 that is 2, and we're going to have a square. And then, since 49 over 4 is a fraction, we're going to have 4 on the denominator, and then 4, I'm going to write in this way, 4 times 18 plus 49. So I'm going to write x plus 7 over 2 square, and then I'm going to multiply 4 times 18, that is 72, plus 49 over 4. So let us write x plus 7 over 2 square, 72 plus 49, that is 121, divide by 4. And to simplify, let us square both sides of the equation. Let us cancel this one. It will give us x plus 7 over 2 equals square root of 121 over 4, that is positive and negative 11 over 2. Since the value of square root of 121 over 4 is positive and negative, we're going to have two equations. So the first one, that is x plus 7 over 2 equals 11 over 2, while the other one is x plus 7 over 2 equals negative 11 over 2. So I'm going to move 7 over 2 on the other side of the equation. It will give us x equals 11 over 2 minus 7 over 2. Since we have the same denominator, let us just simply copy the denominator. And then let us simplify the numerator. That's 11 minus 7. And that is 4 over 2. And we're going to have 2. The other one, this will be x equals negative 11 over 2 minus 7 over 2. Let's copy the denominator. And that is negative 11 minus 7. We're going to have negative 18 over 2. And that is negative 9. So therefore, the values of x are 2 and negative 9. On the last example, we have 4x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. So the first thing that we're going to do is to move negative 6 on the other side of the equation. It will give us 4x squared minus 5x equals 6. And since the value of a is greater than 1, and that is 4, we're going to make the value of a equals to 1. So let us divide the whole equation by 4 to make the values of a equals to 1. So we're going to have x squared minus 5x over 4 equals 6 over 4. If you're going to write this one in simplest form, that is 3 over 2. And then we're going to make this side of equation as a perfect square trinomial. So we're going to add the number on both sides of the equation. So since we have negative 5 over 4, let us divide this one by 2. And that is negative 5 over 8. And that is 4 times 2. So let us square this one. So this will be negative 5 squared is 25, 8 squared that is 64. So we're going to add 25 over 64 on both sides of the equation. So let us factor this one. So the square root of x squared that is x and the sign of the middle term is negative. The square root of 25 over 64 that is 5 over 8 and then square and then let us simplify this fraction the LCM of 2 and 64 that is 64 64 divided by 2 that is 32 multiply by 3 
plus 64 divided by 64 is 1 times 25, that is 25. And then, let us rewrite x minus 5 over 8 square, 32 times 3, that is 96 plus 25 over 64. And then, let us add this one. Let us write this one. 96 plus 25, that is 121 over 64. And then, let us square both sides of the equation. Let's cancel this one. So this will be x minus 5 over 8 equals positive and negative. Square root of 121 over 64 is positive and negative 11 over 8. And since the value of square root of 121 over 64 is positive and negative, we're going to have two equations. And the first one, x minus 5 over 8 equals 11 over 8. The other one is x minus 5 over 8 equals negative 11 over 8. I'm going to move negative 5 over 8 on the other side of the equation. So this will be x equals 11 over 8 plus 5 over 8. So let us copy the denominator. 11 plus 5, that is 16. And 16 divided by 8, that is 2. On the other side, this is x equals negative 11 over 8 plus 5 over 8. So let us copy the denominator, that is 8. Negative 11 plus 5, that is negative 6. Negative 6 over 8 can be written as negative 3 over 4 because they are divisible by 2. So therefore, the values of x are 2 and negative 3 over 4. And this will be our answer. So I hope you've learned from this video. Thank you so much for watching and God blesses all.